So you've made an app or you're developing an application and you have a view to place it on, say, the Microsoft Store. Or perhaps you want to sideload your application so that you can distribute it on some discrete machine that's not your own. In this particular video, what I want to do is to go over the former. I want to show you how you can deploy your application with a view to release it on the Microsoft Store. Um, I'm also going to touch upon the option for sideloading, sideloading your application for um, distribution on other computers, but this is going to really have the Microsoft Store as the main deployment option uh, in focus for this particular video. So without much further ado, let's get straight into this video. So first things first, a couple things to just kind of um, establish. I am going to be focusing on the UWP, the Universal Windows Platform. Now, um, this is or was uh, Microsoft's sort of main flagship platform for application development. Um, it has been succeeded by the uh, .NET MAUI platform, uh, M-A-U-I, that's .NET MAUI. Uh, I'm not 100% sure if MAUI is out yet. I haven't really looked, but I will leave some documentation uh, into uh, all of that good stuff um, if you want to look into it. But uh, I am focusing on UWP as I do develop on, I do develop on Win32 and WPF. It's going to be a UWP application because the process is a lot more streamlined and there are a couple more tools that help make the whole process go a lot more smoother. So I think kind of just um, focusing on a, on a Windows 10 slash 11 UWP compliant application is a good way to go. So with all that out of the way, let's say you have your application. In this case, I'm using my post scheduler application and um, I'm not going to go over how to actually develop the application. We're going to kind of shift away from the debugging slash um, development side of things. This is going to assume you've already done that. This application is actually pretty much feature complete, tested, and debugged. And um, so let's just assume you just want to put it on the store. What you want to do is we're going to split this into two main things. The first half is going to be what you do on the Visual Studio side. The second half will be probably a separate video, what you do on the Microsoft Store side of things. So let's jump straight into Visual Studio. I think I've spent enough time <laughs> um, sort of beat around the bush. But anyway, let's say you're in your Visual Studio session. I'm using Visual Studio 2022, but um, versions 2015 and up should be fine for this. Uh, as long as they support the UWP platform, I think 20, yeah, 2015 is as far back as I think you can go, but 2017 is a safe bet, 19 is a good bet, and then 2022, of course, is the latest build of Visual Studio, latest version. So what you want to do first, you want to sort out your application manifest file, and this is this particular file. If you look on the file on my solution explorer, I've highlighted the package manifest file, and what it does, I'm just going to um, double click it actually. Although I think I do have the tab up here already. Whoops, did that wrong. The tab's already up. So anyway, what it does is that you use the app manifest file to kind of um, declare and define certain aspects of your application that pertain more to the deployment side of things. So what you want to do in this case I have uh, a display name, Post Scheduler Lite, for this particular application, and a description, a lightweight tool that allows you to automate bot posts via HTTP onto a remote client. What you want to do is fill out this entire, the entirety of these tabs. Um, you have visual assets. So here you upload um, your icons, your badge icons, your large tau icons. And there's a quick way to do this um, without having to do it individually. You can just use the asset generator and make sure you do this. Quick heads up, I did have some issues with the badge logo. Um, it wouldn't auto generate. So this one here, the badge logo seems to be black and white um, by default, and you should leave it black and white. If you have any other color for your badge logo, or it doesn't load, you'll be met with an error. So you want to make sure you can still um, import a color logo like I did for my LDN Studio IG logo. However, uh, it just automatically makes it a black and white image. 
uh, and that's completely fine. That's actually how it's supposed to be. So anyway, um, you want to make sure you do that. So heads up, the auto, the asset, the asset generator doesn't seem at least all the time to generate this particular um, asset. So you may need to go into this tab and do it yourself if you notice that these are all blank, even though you've uploaded all the other ones. Um, this one, let's see what we're going. Capabilities. Uh, yeah, so uh, obviously my application in this case uses an internet connection. It uses an API which utilizes HTTP, so I've gone ahead and um, chosen this option. You're going to want to do whatever is um, respective to your own application. Do you say, for example, utilize the microphone? Maybe you utilize the music library directory. So you just want to make sure you have these cap capabilities here defined. Declarations. I've gone ahead and I haven't added any declarations because there was none I could find that was suitable. But you may find that your application may be an app surface, which means that this your UWP app may um, interface with another with another UWP application. So that so that would be an app service app, and you'd have to declare it here. One one quick thing to note is that if you are making say Win32. Uh, if you're making a Win32 application, you want to deploy a Win32 application, uh, you're going to have to declare, um, I think it's called restricted access. Not too sure if it's going to be here or unrestricted access. Yeah, restricted launch is probably what it is. And what that just basically means is that um, uh, because the Win32 API uh, gives you more or less full access to the machine, um, you have to... You have to declare that level of prowess uh, when deploying your application, obviously for security reasons. UWP operates on a sandbox, so you don't have to really worry about that too much. And then you just go ahead and you fill out the rest. So content URI, I didn't have to do anything for that. And of course, the packaging. So with all that out of the way, the next thing that we want to that we want to do is to actually publish the app. Now, what I've gone ahead and what the way I approach this is, um, and probably the most streamlined way to do this is to associate it first with the store. So if you again, you're gonna need a Microsoft um, developer account. Having a Microsoft developer account basically just means that you can upload um, apps and games to the Microsoft Store. So make sure you are a Microsoft Partner Center developer. Um, I think you have to pay for the membership. I had to pay for mine. Uh, it may or, I don't know what the price is right now. It may or may not have gone up or down or stayed the same. I'm not too sure. But you, I'll leave some links in the description. Uh, if you want to be a Microsoft Partner Center um, developer, I'm not like affiliated or anything like that. I'm just literally just passing on the information that you're going to need if you're really starting this process from scratch. So anyway, jumping straight back into Visual Studio, um, what we're going to do, um, just assuming you've got all of that out of the way, right-click your application name, the project title, go to Publish and Associate App with the Store. Just as a quick heads up, after we do this, we're going to go on create app packages because we're going to need the MSIX package to upload on the um, submission side of things. But first, let's just associate the app with the store. What you want to do, and I'm, gonna, I'm not going to complete all of this and finish all of this. I'm just going to show you the wizard, this kind of all these forms, because I've already done this. And I don't want to um, kind of publish another app or create another package. But what you want to do is hit next. Now, I have a few packages that I've already kind of, um, some names I've already reserved for different uh, other um, scenarios and applications. What you want to do, if you have these options, it just means that you've, on the submission side of the, um, of the Windows app kind of su um, submission form, which you can find on the Microsoft Partner, uh, what's it called? Microsoft Partner Center dashboard. Um you'll find the apps you have reserved the names for here. And it will just automatically come onto your Visual Studio session if you have linked your Microsoft account. Now, I, I had an issue here where I tried to reserve a name and it wouldn't work. And let's just do a test. If I say something like, hello world, just a test. 
If I just try and reserve this name. I I got I've just got an error. An unexpected error occurred when I attempted to reserve the app name. Now this may be for a number of reasons. Um first, the most obvious one might be that maybe the app has or this app name Hello Hello World has already been reserved by another developer. Uh they may or may not have published the app, but the name itself may have been um reserved. So let's say you're making an application that has a title that has already been reserved. And then, okay, you want to figure out a, a unique name. What I had to do is I first reserved the name on the Partner Center dashboard, um, and which when you when you go and opt for a new um, application submission, you can reserve a name there. And what was interesting is that the same name I reserved my app for in the Visual Studio session that didn't that had an error come back to me, it actually worked on the dashboard. So. I, my suggestion would be try on the dashboard first uh, via the Microsoft Partner Center website dashboard and then it will automatically show up here, which is what it did. It was the post scheduler light. So I'm just going to, um, just as an example, I don't want to hit this again because I'm, I'm using this title, this application. So I'm just going to go for this one. I'm going to hit next. And then what you do, you have the summary and you just hit associate. Now, I'm not going to associate my app again because I don't want to kind of mess things up potentially, which it won't do anything because this is, um, I'm not really even highlighting the other the other application that I'm actually, uh, I'm interested in. But um, this is as far as it goes for this. And once you hit associate, nothing really seems to show. I'm just going to close the wizard. It just brings you back to the Visual Studio session. But once that's happened, then what you can do is right click publish and then go to create app packages because what you're going to need to do is to create an msix package um, in order to upload to the to the windows store via the submission um, the submission form so we have microsoft store as post scheduler light by ldn studio ig that's uh, that's basically myself in a sense uh, side loading is if you want to distribute your application to other computers um, like discreetly this is a decent option for if you are distributing your application um, on, say, your own website, um, perhaps on another on another hosting website, or just within a company or a business, and uh, you need to deploy the software within your network. You're going to want to sideload your app. But in this case, we're looking at the Microsoft Store, so I've gone ahead and selected this. Hit Next. It will automatically generate a versioning uh you can just keep this it doesn't really it's actually quite um, useful to let auto increment because sometimes things happen where the certification of your application won't pass and i'll touch upon that in a second but before that imp quite important you select the correct cpu architecture target now my application has actually developed targeting an x64 architecture so um computers that run x64 of uh, ie the 64 bit um CPU instruction set, which is usually these days most PCs and laptops, then such laptops will be able to run the program without really much of an issue. But for 32-bit computers, it's always a safer bet to target x86. So what you want to do, find your, CPU, your correct CPU target of your Visual Studio project and hit Create. Now, uh, reeling it back a little bit, make sure that your um, solution configuration is built to release and the correct CPU architecture. Usually, by default, it's on debug once you start a Visual Studio session and you debug, you're in a stage of you know development and programming and debugging your application. But once you're looking at the deployment side of things, you want to go ahead and hit release and make sure this is correct as well. Only because it creates the necessary directory um, for your um, build, uh, for your project build. So you want to make sure you're doing all of what I've shown you from the app association to the um, publishing, to the creating the app packages under the release build. Once you've done that, hit build. So build and then build solution. Make sure you've done that. Once that's all happened, um, what, will ha what will fire is the app certification. Now, my application has already passed the app certification, but I did get an error, and 
at first and that error was to do with the badge logo is that i didn't generate it properly as i said that could happen so um uh, you may get some issues um via certification you just want to make sure that your application it, it, it's worth carefully debugging and testing your app to just make sure it's running as smooth as possible that's why i kind of i'm leaning more to uwp now for viable deployed application development because it just takes care of a lot of um a lot of so a lot of issues that would you'd otherwise have to kind of look into when it comes to Win32, you know, declaring um, restricted access and things like that. It just makes things a lot more smoother. So once you've done all of that, you will then have in your file explorer, uh, depending where your target directory is. Let's see if I have it up. Uh, So what will happen is that you have in your directory, if you just go ahead and find it, minus post scheduler, you have a folder called app packages. Click that and then you will find your MSIX upload file. This is what you submit to the Microsoft store. Um, but then you do have two, you, well not two, in this case it's two because I had to do run the test, um, um, the app certification twice. So I've got version zero and version one zero one zero. But this is what you submit, is this file, the MSIX upload file. So, uh, I'm going to kind of wrap up the video here. I may make another video uh, regarding the Microsoft submission side of things on the actual storefront. I might be using a different application in order to demonstrate this, only because uh, I don't want to run try and run the same application twice on the store. So, that, that video may come at a later time. Uh, however, this will set out the groundwork and um, uh, you should be good to go for the submission once you've handled everything I've pretty much more or less glossed over here on the Visual Studio side of things. So I hope you found this video um, somewhat informative. I hope you found this video um, helpful, if not even entertaining, who knows. And uh, my name is Will. Uh, keep up to date on the channel for more things text c sharp walkthroughs and even um, um 2d games development as you f may or may not have come across on my channel already um, you should probably find my fiber handles on my um on the description and my other linkedin handles and uh, i'm gonna leave some useful resources in the description also so i hope you have a great day and thanks for watching Bye bye